What's going on, you guys? Welcome back. Uh, where'd the truck go? <laughs> the truck actually is right there. You can see it's outside the shop. It is turned around. Um, it moved out of the shop under its own power. I actually made a video of me doing that. I was excited to show you guys, but when I fired it up, my mic did not like it and just totally, it made it sound like you were listening to somebody playing the tuba underwater. Terrible. So I'll, I'll put that clip, I'll put the clip at the end of this video so you guys can see what I'm talking about. But the truck moved outside under its own power, which is a really, really big accomplishment. Um, transmission still has to be plugged into the controller right now because it's by itself. It, I believe they default to second and third gear and reverse. So those are the only three things. That way it doesn't leave you stranded out on the side of the road. You can at least limp it off the highway or something like that. So got to get the controller hooked up. Got to start on the wiring. Um, for those of you that are new or just coming across this channel here, here's what I'm dealing with. So I've actually went ahead and cleaned a lot of the stuff out. As you can see, I just threw it in the back of the truck. But the dash is gone. I've painted it a little bit, cut up all out. I cut out all the unnecessary wiring. And it's kind of drooped over the front here. Um, all this stuff right here is for the front. This is constant power in. All these right here are for the wiper motor. Um, this big purple one here is the start. All these wires here. Yep, this one with the purple. Purple is the fuel sending unit or the signal from the fuel sending unit. All these are rear running and brake lights. Same with up front, This, except for this big fat green one right here. That is our horn. And then all the rest of them are for headlights and blinkers. So that is all I'll be using for right now in this truck. Uh, I need to get our fuse box wired up. But some of you may remember my whole reasoning for cutting all that out was because I opted to go with one of there it is, one of these guys right here. This is a like a 12 unit fuse panel. Pretty neat little setup, but I decided to go a different route. Um, made my own panel for the five circuits that I will be running or six circuits that I will be running up front of the truck. I can always add to it later. I'm going to put another fuse uh, panel, fuse relay panel on the passenger side for the ECU. Everything that kind of requires higher power draws. So let me show you what I got to control our lights. We have got this guy right here. This is an eight fused fuse uh, block. It's like one inch by, I don't know what that is, three and a half. Bunch of six pole bus bars. This guy right here, because this is where, this is a five amp block here. This will control all our switches. Here's all our relays. Got a bunch of these stickers from previous jobs I've done, but this one will be headlights. I put the horn on there to make sure this one's horn because it is controlled by the ground. And then we'll have headlights, running lights, right blinker, left blinker. Here's our flasher. Now, what I'll do, let me show you guys how this works. So, power is on. I've got this little light bulb here just to kind of use as testing. So here is our, number one will be headlights. Come down here to number one. We got ground powered up. Boom, so turn the switch on, headlights. Second one is our horn. Definitely made sure to mark the horn relay horn. That is down here on this because this bus bar is our switched bus bar. Number two, you can see is a black wire. That is so that is to remind me that this little guy is powered up by ground. So you can see the green light on the power probe here. Hit the ground over, turns the light. So all of these are gonna just they're just a signal post for our relays. We're going to come over here to our, this bottom one here will be our right turn signal. Come down here on this guy. 
You can see she flick, flickers on and off. This one will be the left, same thing. Bottom one here. And we have our flasher. Now each one of those relays is controlled by this two pole flasher. You just have power running into the bottom. Then power out, which splits up to two, which splits into two on this bottom bus bar down here and powers both of these relays. So that is what we are installing in the truck. And I'm going to show you. I'm all over the place. We're going to take this out. Put it in the truck, and I'm going to probably, I'm going to try to explain a little bit better too as we install this thing in the truck how I'm going to be switching powers on and off. Um, in the future, I am removing this column right here. I'm going to a lighter weight column, a smaller, skinnier one. And I originally bought the other fuse boxes that was gonna run all the factory switches and everything. But I figured since I'm pulling the column out, why spend all that time wiring in all the factory switches when just, just set it up the way it's gonna be when I get to that point. So I built this fuse box here. And it is going to be mounted right in here. So these are actually factory poles that were already in down there. And uh, believe it or not, that fuse box bolt pattern lined up. So it's going to bolt there. That way I can get underneath the dash, get to all of our fuses. And we're going to run... This is a constant power to the constant power side of our fuse box, which is a solid red wire coming out of our fuse box. Now the red wire with a yellow tracer, that is a key on power. And that is controlled by the, where is it? Pink wire, there we go. That is controlled by this pink wire coming out of our ignition switch, so. Um, like I said, I do plan on pulling that column out and replacing it with a lighter weight column. But for right now, I'm going to use the ignition switches there. I wait so I have the keys. All that stuff will be updated here, hopefully soon. <laughs> but for right now, I guess um, I've got to get this thing wired, get the lights working so we can get it driving before I head back to work. But I'm going to go ahead and bolt that up, get it nice and secured. So... I will be uh, right back. Hopefully we'll get the dash pad set in place and then I'll show you what I'm going to use to control all these. And then as I go through it, try to explain it the best I can. Um, I am going to put another link in the description for another YouTuber, a Ratty Muscle Cars, Ratty Hot Rods, Ratty Muscle Cars. Uh, that guy, really, really cool, breaks everything down, goes into much, much better detail. And he has a whole bunch of different videos on showing you guys how to wire stuff, like your headlights, turn signals, uh, shows you how to wire your horn, like uh, fan controls, all kinds of cool stuff. But I'm going to do my best to kind of describe or explain what it is that I'm doing as I'm going through the wiring procedure on this truck. But again, too, I'll leave that link in the description. That way you guys can go check it out as well. So uh, right now I'll get that thing secured in the truck. And then we'll get this dash in into the truck as well. We'll get that bolted up and start running all of our trim pieces and stuff, getting ready for our switches and gauges and all that. Um, this is the original pad, and it was pretty busted up. I just have a two-part epoxy on the outside here going over some uh, metal mesh used to patch up drywall. As you can see underneath, just took a... Kind of a, a buffer wheel, ground it down a little bit so this can sit down, and then I'll go over it with a DA or a, the same buff pad. We'll flatten it out a little bit, smooth it out, and then once those are set up and dry, I have got this guy right here. So that doesn't have to look too pretty, but this guy's sitting out in the sun, so I can go ahead and put on top. I bought that for 58 bucks off of eBay. I've got a total of 38. 30, 30, 40 dollars in epoxy and the mesh on the dash pad. So under a hundred bucks, I could have this thing recapped, look semi-decent, right? Not a bunch of cracks and be it all busted up. So 
This is pretty much all set up. I'm gonna go ahead and bolt that little fuse box down to our steering column. Then I'll get this set into place, so, and I'll be right back. All right, fuse box is installed in the truck, got it bolted to our factory column. Uh, also went ahead and ran most of the wiring. Only thing I didn't wire up is my brake light switch. I, uh, I ordered new tail lights. And the way that this thing's kind of wired up is a tad bit different than factory would have been. So waiting on those, make sure I, that way I can make sure I get all that set up the way I want it or make sure it works. But other than that, everything else is ran to our fuse box. All it needs now is our signals from the switch. So uh, I've got to finish cleaning up the top of our dash so I can get it recapped. And then we'll put that in and install our switch. But before I do all that, kind of want to show you guys what it is we got. Now I know I've done, uh, if you go back a few videos, I did a, a whole a little thing on how to build your own fuse relay panel. Um, I'm going to put a link in the description too to Ratty Muscle Car. I know I've said, I know I keep saying that, but uh, he breaks it down. He does like a full on diagram wires. It's like you were a little kid building something to go to the science fair, right? He shows you everything. It's really, really cool. So definitely helps but uh let me show you what i got here here is our panel as you can see most of the wires are ran to it uh there's our using the factory high low beam or the factory dimmer switch there um all the wires are coming from the factory bulkhead i figured since it's there might as well use it and i got all the color pinouts for everything i'm where they come from off of Google so if you ever need to know what the pinout is just type in what it is you're looking for scroll through the pictures you'll find it but so fuse box right here to eight blades top four are power all the time bottom half is key on power so take our little power probe here we'll test these things you can see there is nothing there I'm poking on it, there is no powers. But if you come up here, we have power to all these guys. So, all those are powers. Come to the next one, nothing. So, we'll turn the key on. Go ahead and touch our flip fuses now. Now we have power. So, bottom half's key on, top half is power all the time. That's for headlights, horn, brake lights, etc. Now, um, I know I explained it while we were on the table, but I wanna goof off a little bit here. So, black wire, that's our horn relay and it's triggered by a ground. So, horn works. Right and left blinkers are right here. You can hear the flasher flashing. There's right, there's left, then if we turn the power off, I can power it up, there's nothing. So, all that is pretty much set up, like I said, just needs the uh, switch wires from our new switch that I'll be installing the dash. Uh, also went ahead and took the time to mount up a whole other fuse panel on the passenger side of the truck. It's in the spot where the old uh, the heater box, all that whole AC heater box, that whole unit was at. So it sits directly behind the glove box. And basically, driver side fuse panel is going to control the truck, lights, small stuff like that. Uh, passenger sides, all drivetrain and heavy, heavy powers. So, let's show you what we got here. Whoop, there we go. So, I've spent, now a lot of that is going to get cleaned up. It's just a mess there. All those are going to go to a component. Matter of fact, let's, let's go around the other side so I'm not having to reach for everything. <laughs> uh, may have heard in the video too, if you're paying attention, turn the key on. We are now have 
fuel pump is now wired into our truck. So here's our fuel pump relay. Have that wired in. This is power out to our pump. This is relay ground. This one is relay switch. It gets its signal from the ECU, which is right here. It's also going to power up the same another relay for our intercore water pump. But there's what we got. So I have plenty of room for more relays there. This little bus bar here is going to be for all our key on powers. This one comes from the key. So when these see powers, kicks the relays on over here and turns everything on. Um, like I said, like all this stuff will get loomed. It's just sitting there right now because I'm kind of I'm in the process of running wiring and stuff like that. This is a very, very tedious job. I'm not going to tell you it's hard. Um, if you were, it's very intimidating if you were just to go, oh my goodness, right? It just looks like a really big mess. But if you ever wanted to tackle it, as long as you focus on one thing at a time, it's really not that difficult. So just don't try to overwhelm yourself. Right? It's just, it's ons and offs, basically. So, but like I said too, I'll put a link to Ratty Muscle Car in the description. He does full on diagrams. So if I'm a little confusing, he is not. So, but anyways, all that stuff is ran. Um, what I'm gonna do now is kind of get you guys set up in the uh, stand. I'm gonna get my dash set outside. I'm gonna get the little grinder on there, scuff up the whole top of that thing because now my two-part epoxy, or matter of fact, I don't know if I showed you. I don't remember, um, but yeah. So I need to knock all this stuff down here, get it somewhat flat, clean it all up. I got the cap sitting out on the back of the truck now in the sun. That way it helps me kind of, it'll help me form it a little bit. Plastic moves a little better when it's warm. But anyways, get you guys up and stand. I'm going to hit that real quick with my little angle grinder to knock off all the high spots. I'm going to mix up some more resin. We're going to get that cap installed on, the, on this dash pad itself. That way we can get it in the truck and start wiring up our new light switch now like i said i'm not using any of the factory stuff we're going off a whole different scenario um i plan on changing out that column to a lightweight column so everything's being wired as if it was already had a lightweight column and uh another reason why i keep mentioning ratty muscle car is because i got the idea for this switch right here from i just stumbled across it but um this has your turn signals, all right here. Headlights, oops, <laughs> right, all right here as well, and a horn. So everything, all that stuff will be controlled off of that, which makes life very, very simple. But before I put that in, I gotta get the dash in. So like I said, I'm gonna get the truck out of the way, get you guys set up in the stand, hit the top of that thing with the angle grinder, and see if we can't glue our dash cap on. So, ready, time lapse. Uh, all right, so top of our dash is been ground, been kind of flattened out. What I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna use some brake parts cleaner because that's about all I got. Uh, I didn't grab anything else when I was out today. <laughs> uh, brake parts cleaner, go ahead and wipe off the top here. Make sure we get all the dirt and dust off before I mix up any more of our two part epoxy. Now some people can do this with just like 3M tape, which is fine. Um, that stuff actually works really, really well, to tell you the truth. I just want to epoxy this because this thing has so many breaks. It is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. They're and they're, they're pretty big, so I'm gonna glue. 
my cap to this. I'm also going to help pull it down with little tiny uh, screws in certain areas to kind of help pull it tight to the top of this thing. To give it some more uh, rigidity. Now we got all that stuff cleaned. Where we're going to put our cap. Another thing you guys want to do, how many of you, uh, there's probably quite a few. I know I used to do it all the time, but use 3M tape on anything like this. And uh, the first couple times it doesn't stick. One, make sure you clean it really, really good. Alcohol probably would, would have worked best, but you can see I'm still grabbing some dust, dirt off. Uh, two, I like to use this stuff here. I'm picking up at your auto parts store, the adhesion promoter. Works really, really good for if you're using, like, if you ground on a piece of plastic and you're using a two part epoxy to kind of help fix a crack, use this stuff. Uh, with your epoxy, it gives it a much, much stronger bite. You can almost, as a matter of fact, let me get you down here. I'm going to show you some of the things because you can almost feather. Let's see here. So you can see here, right? You can, it'll pretty much allow you to feather your epoxy into the plastic without peeling it up. It'll peel off the paint for sure. But if you rough up the plastic and then use adhesion promoter and then your epoxy, it bites a lot like um, a lot like Bondo would. It lets you. It bites really good and it allows you to feather it in, like you were saying in Bondo. So, show you guys here. Auto parts store. It is kind of expensive, but it's like forty bucks a can. So, be prepared. But it does, unless you like doing this all the time. It does help. And just do a light mist. He said it is very, very expensive. So go ahead and put that on there. Put it across it. The two of the epoxy I'm using is KB Well. I actually got it at Home Depot. Or no, not Home Depot. My bad. Rose. Clear weld. Start setting up in five minutes. Um I get starts setting up in five minutes. Usually it takes a day for it to completely harden. So it doesn't matter if it's 5, 10, 15. It doesn't matter. It's a 50-50 mix. I'll go ahead and put it on some of this cardboard here. Nice, good, healthy amount. Our dash pad, our cap is sitting out in the sun right now. Warming up. Like I said, we're going to pull it in here. Set it on top of some of this uh, epoxy. Make sure you wear gloves too. This stuff is a pain to get off. Um, I had to use acetone yesterday to get it off my fingers. Oops. Make sure you mix it up real good. The whole top's going to get a light coat. And it's just going to help. Keep that pad secure, or that cap, I should say. If anybody out there has ever tried to look for a dash pad or a brand new dash for these trucks, woo, they are hard to find one, a good used one, and they uh, are expensive. If I remember correctly, they're like $800 at least for a good aftermarket one, for a new one. So. I said this dash pad was like 58 bucks. I'll put a link to it in the description because some of you guys out there are gonna go, are gonna want one. Actually, I tested it. It fits for what I pay for it. Pretty good, actually. And the way it kind of goes around everything, you probably won't. Once you get all the rest of the trim set up into place on this thing, probably won't tell. Get a little messy. Getting a nice good layer over all these parts that were fixed already once. That way the pad or the cap has a good chance of sticking to these and helping strengthen those. You saw there too, there's a little aluminum mesh. It worked really good if you did it on the back side. Um, but since I knew I was getting a cap, 
I just did it on the front side here. But if you're going to save it, you could do all of this stuff on the back side if your dash was not as brittle as this one. Do all your stuff on the back side. The little patches are used for drywall. It's got that aluminum mesh in there to help uh, that stuff uh, hold on to. Like, so you don't have to cut drywall pieces. You can just put that over the hole. But um, you can use that stuff on the back side to help reinforce your repair. And then use your adhesion, you know, adhesion promoter on the front side after you grind in a groove and feather it out as far as you can to use this stuff in, fill it in. Then you can sand it, feather everything in, put a nice good coat of primer on there, and then get yourself a can of wrinkle paint. And go to town. Put two or three good coats on it. Let it sit for about a day. Come back. You won't even, you can't even tell. This thing's so brittle. And every time I twist it or move it around, it kept breaking. Four, four of them happened just by it sitting on this stand. Me moving it around, little twist. All these fingers are gone. Like all these here. It's just, it was nerve wracking. Every time I move this thing. Each one of these has more epoxy. Uh, a little bit here. Okay. If I can get some more kind of spread around the whole top of this thing. Warm today. I'm already starting to feel it feels like it's starting to set up quicker. So we're gonna get our pad sitting out in the sun right now, sunbathing. Yeah. I'm hoping spreading all this around will definitely help it. Yeah, see all that book. Let's go out here and grab it. Nice and pliable now. Shouldn't be too big of an issue. I got a pair of these guys. A little flat bottom. They're gonna help me hold it in place. Make sure you get those guys up front. Make sure you roll it around from front to back. It's got a hook up front to help with positioning it. Take your fingers and just kind of help push it into place. Get this guy. There. Okay. Then go around. Just make sure everything else is going to fit the way you want. I guess it's already telling me that I should come this way more. Oh yeah, that fits much better. Holds nice and tight. Sits up in there. So now that I have that, I will go ahead and start on a time lapse now because it's going to be pretty tedious. But um, we'll go around little holes, little screws to help hold everything in place. So time lapse.
and done. So, the cap is on there pretty good. Everything feels nice and sturdy. Uh, I'm gonna let it sit overnight though. I need that stuff to be able to kind of be completely cured. I've always had an issue of like taking it and throwing it right in and not letting anything set up. But tonight, I'm gonna let this one set up, let that resin or that two-part epoxy cure underneath. Uh, it feels pretty good. Put you down here. Definitely one heck of a transformation. I am gonna clean all this up and paint the whole dash black. So you are not gonna see any of this. I made sure to uh, get these little guys here and use a taper bit, let's see, to countersink them into the dash. That way, got a nice little clean look. Plus now that after this thing is painted black, you are not really gonna be able to tell unless you get right up on it or unless you know what it is you're looking for. This little cover fits pretty darn good for 58 bucks. I am not gonna lie to you about that. So definitely make sure to get the get a link to that in the description because I know a lot of these trucks out there have busted up dashes. Um, you don't have to go, of course, go through all this stuff that I just did. You could probably just throw it on there with some 3M tape, clean it up really good, put that on there, use some 3M tape, double-sided tape, and probably do just fine. But I wanted to see if I couldn't strengthen this up a little bit, give it some nice, give it some... That's actually pretty good. Give it some good, good, solid rigidity. So, but anyways, like I said, I'm going to let all this stuff cure. Get it before I do anything else with it. Uh, tomorrow morning, I'll go ahead and clean it up, get it painted, and then you guys will. Uh, I'll be back with you guys in the morning to put this in the truck so we can get started on wiring up our lights. Good morning. Actually, it's good afternoon. I brought everything out here this morning, got it cleaned up, got it all painted. Actually, got it painted late last night before I put it away so I could get out of here and. Uh, get it in the truck i'm actually really excited to show you guys everything's painted it's black it's gonna look really really cool so here we go and there it is that cover sitting in place it's only being really held in by the two outside seven millimeters and sitting on the brackets underneath just in case i need to pull it out for any reason but i'm fairly confident it does not have to come out again so let's hop in here real quick now I go to the junkyard a lot, so if I need to find something, or like I said, I go to the junkyard a lot. Um, so I'll, I'll look for something. If I find, some, find something that's in better shape, I'll snag it up because this this dash was pretty beat up. It's really really um, kind of brittle on the top side. Like everything inside the cab, facing the driver and underneath, wasn't too bad. Uh, our dash bezel is a little cracked, but for the most part, it, everything cleaned up and painted. Looks pretty decent. Oh, got an aftermarket radio guy here that comes with those vents. I cut that center out because this is where our uh, buttons that cut will be run off of that fuse panel there. That's where those will mount. But for right now, they're just sitting. Then you can see I got our outside bezel installed into place with uh, the most or the cluster bezel that's installed as well. And you can see here, I've got all these wires ran. So this is our loom to our horn, which would be this guy here. This is our horn. Um, green, red, and purple. These are our blinkers. And this guy here is our running park lights and headlights. So this is all ran. It is tied into our homemade fuse panel down there. What I do, uh, now I have to finish wiring in our switch. I've actually got to finish pinning that or making that up. I've got most of it done, but before I finish, I kind of want to uh, show you guys what I use, how I do it. Another thing I want to go over too is, uh, I know I said I'll put Ratty Muscle Car in the description. He does a really cool, full-on video of using a Kubota switch to wire in your lights. But this is an aftermarket or it's an eBay Kubota switch. So these colors on this, here are going to be different from an actual Kubota switch. So before I finish that up, if you guys are interested, you're going to watch his, his video or whatever, but you're going to get one of these switches, grab a pen. So 
So flip this guy over real quick. So you're going to see black and blue with white stripes. That is this guy right here. These are our horns. Next one, you're going to see uh, solid green. That is right here off our switch, solid green. That will be our power for our switch for the, um, the blinkers. And this, this green wire is off your 5 amp switch power, right? Just that little block there. That's it. The one that runs all the switches, that's for your 5 amp. Red with uh, white tracer. That is your right blinker. And then you got green with white tracer. That is your left blinker. So remember that. This guy here is the last one. Come down here. Now we have red with yellow tracer. That is this guy here. This comes off our 5 amp switch power. This is power in for your running lights, headlights. Yellow will be your park slash running lights. Brown is your headlights. Now these switches, this switch comes with one more. On this one particular one, it's orange. I already cut it back. Let's see if I can. There you go. Kind of get in there. It's orange down there. Now this wire has power when your park lights are on, but shuts off when your headlights turn on. So you can use that one on your vehicles or whatever like that. Let's say um, like what I'm going to be doing here and I'll wire it in. I've got new headlights here, but the top of these guys and they follow the blinkers have this little LED halo that goes around. So I could, if I got my, if I just have my parker running lights on or my park lights on, it'll turn those halos on, which is really cool, which I think would be really cool, especially at dark. If you got to show it off, take pictures or whatever, um, use that same one for, uh, underglow lighting, stuff like that. Because the second you turn your headlights on, you're going to take off to drive at night. It shuts those off. You're legal. Everything's cool. So it's just like a show-off type wire. I have it pinned, single. Uh, I'll wire that in in the future. I didn't realize that switch came with that, so I was really excited to find that. Uh, that is the orange one. So again, go ahead, pause it, write it down. Remember... That is for our eBay Kubota switch. All right, now that I got that out of the way, um, I'm gonna go ahead and get you guys, we're gonna get set up here real quick, kind of and uh, do the last pin on this wire. Now the kit I am using is off eBay as well. I buy everything off eBay. As much as I would like to spend a lot of money on high dollar stuff, if I did that every single time I needed a part, this thing would never leave the shop. So, uh, I'll upgrade as I go. No, no, I won't. If it works, why fix it? So, I got these neat little guys here at eBay, the little weather pack connectors. Show you. Got all the pins, all the little rubber gaskets go in there. One, two, three, four, five, six pin connectors. Really cheap. This particular kit came with the here. Came with the crimping tool as well. Really neat tool. Makes everything look nice and clean. Now I'm no professional uh, wiring guy whatsoever. This is all just a hobby to me. But when I'm done wiring it, I feel much better because everything's clipped, everything's sealed uh, inside or out. Doesn't matter. And I feel I feel like I accomplish something or it just it looks neater to me instead of having a bunch of spade connectors which don't get me wrong i still do but especially uh but anyways <laughs> enough jabbering let's go ahead and uh get this guy finished out all right got it all plugged in to our homemade harness just kind of got it sitting right here it'll be pushed in i got screws it'll be mounted just like this on our bezel Right now, we're just going to let it hang. So, everything is off. Key to the truck is off. We'll do a quick walk around here. So, we got no lights on. Our lights should be off. Nothing up front. Everything's good. Now, we'll come over here. 
First things first. Can we chew our horn? Sure can. So horn works. Now we're gonna go to park lights or running lights. Now that you can see rear running lights are on or park lights. Fronts are on as well. We got no headlights yet. Come back around. Boom. One more click should turn. Whoops. That's the blinker, silly head. So one more click. Should turn everything on. Still got our running lights. Those are still on. Come up front. Running lights are still on as well as now our headlights are on. Now I did use the factory blinker or uh, dimmer on the column for right now. So let's see if that worked out. Oh, sure does. So got all that taken care of. Now blinkers, let's check our blinkers. Blinkers are a key on. So we got our right turn signal. Got our right rear working. And our right front. Let's go ahead and do our left. It's like playing ring around the truck. Go ahead and I don't know if you can hear it, but the flash are flashing out there. All right, got our left. Our right is off. And our driver's side front. So everything is working. Our switch is now mocked up, ready to go. Go ahead and shut everything off. So now we pretty much have all the wiring. Oh, really head. <laughs> uh, just, I just shut the blinker off. See? Maybe I can put a buzzer in here Help it to remind me that, hey, your headlights are still on, silly head. Okay, now it should be off. Uh, cool. Everything's off. So now that we got most of our wiring, all the wiring we need to drive this thing pretty much done. Uh, like I said, still waiting on my new tail lights. That way I can make sure my brake lights are wired the way I want. Um, or at least make sure that I can wire, or they're, they work in a way with the LEDs. I'm not 100% sure they say plug and play, but if any of you have ever done wiring before, you know how tedious and nerve wracking it can be, especially when you wire something up the way you think it should be. And then you gotta redo it because something's just a little off. So anyways. Hopefully those get here in the next few days. My grill, the new grill should be here within the next few days as well so we can get that mounted. Um, got to get that fender out there now. We got to get the inside of that cleaned and painted so I can get that mounted back up onto the truck. A lot, a lot of little stuff. They say like, I mean, a lot of tedious work left, but I mean, most of the major stuff is done. I still got to get this thing out to get an alignment. Um, so. My plan is still to get this on the road driving before I go to work as well. So if I got to just back, take the back roads, fine. I need, I want to see how the brakes do. I need to figure out how well this transmission shifts. Uh, if I got it. So anyways, uh, fender, we still got a bunch of work to do. We're going to save that for another video. Uh, we got our dash mounted. We got our, uh, the dash cap installed and mounted on this video. We got our, um, fuse boxes and panels, relays wired in, as well as our headlights, taillight switch, all that stuff. So a lot of work in this video. I do apologize if it jumps around a bit. I'm a little, right, I'm just trying to get this thing done. Hopefully I, you know, gave some good explanations or at least motivated some of you guys out there. Anyways, thank you guys for hanging out. Thank you for watching. Uh, I got to get cleaned up again. I don't know if you can tell, but we do have another big storm coming again. Like we get hit every other day with one. So, anyways, 
Thank you guys for hanging out. Thank you for watching. I'll leave links to most of the stuff I use in the description. Go check out Ratty Muscle Car. It'll help you on your guys' hot rods as well. Uh, again, thank you for hanging out. Hit that subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll catch you on the next one.